Hello everybody and welcome back to Luna Awaken. My name is Lynn Lewis and this is the final video in my All About Witches series. For those of you who have been following, thank you so much for being a part of this learning experience with me. It was extremely intriguing and fun to do all the research and create these videos for all of you. And for those of you who haven't seen the videos, feel free to check out the playlist I've created. If not all the videos, feel free to check out a couple of the witches that sound intriguing to you. Every one of them are blessed and wonderful and very interesting in their own unique way and just sharing the knowledge i you know i wanted to do this series because i wanted to discuss a subject matter that i particularly didn't know a lot about and the information i learned i wanted to just share with the world and hopefully those of you who have watched them have learned just as much as i have and had a, as much fun understanding all the information. I find that this subject matter in particular is often misunderstood and many people don't really know a lot about it unless they obviously practice the craft itself. So for those of you who um, are interested, feel free to check out that playlist. And again, I hope that all of you understand that this is a judgment-free channel. We do not want to discriminate the individuals and cultures who specifically practice these crafts. And just an FYI, I did just set up a donation email. Please feel free to donate if you feel inclined, as it allows me to continue making these videos. They're really fun to make, and I really appreciate any small donation. It goes a long way. Now this final witch isn't necessarily what I would like to call a witch. Some people might, but for me, I would prefer to call them a healer. And this witch is what is known as a shaman. And almost every culture in the world has some form of shaman that lives within their tribe, within their culture, within their land. And I think everybody has heard of the word. And I'm sure most people, like me, hasn't even really thought about what they do. And I've known many shamans as well. And I'm thinking, I don't know anything about what they do. When I did my research and learned a lot about them, I found them extremely interesting. And I found it also very quite fitting to discuss them towards the end of the series as we approach Halloween and um, Day of the Dead. Based on how they do their craft, it really is a life purpose. They are predominantly healers and they dedicate their entire life and soul mission to ensuring that they fulfill this healing journey, not only for themselves, but for others as well. Now the term shaman stems from the Tungus tribe in Siberia and the faith of shamanism is the ancient spiritual practice and way of life for a lot of the indigenous tribes around that region. Now they are most common in northern Asia but they have long spread throughout other tribes and even the western world throughout the past few years. And Shamanism nowadays can be more categorized along the lines of universal spiritual wisdom, but traditional shamanism is strengthening the human body and strengthening human connection to that of the natural world. So shamans believe that we exist within a parallel realm to that of the spiritual world. We work on this plane and they work on that plane. And they typically will help an individual by going into the spiritual world and talking to whomever spirits they need to discuss and talk to, whomever guides and whichever divination techniques they need to use. They might even use runes. They use whatever technique they need to use and do to expel the negative energy and the pain and trauma that is being caused upon the individual. That could also include malevolent spirits whom they believe is causing a lot of that trauma and pain. So they believe in good and bad Bad spirits this world and the other world or spiritual world and eventually removing all that negativity to help heal the individual so an individual who wants to become a shaman there's a few different ways that they can um, do it in some tribes a shaman is elected by the tribe 
they're usually studying under the current shaman and then they eventually take over but all shamans typically have to undergo what is known as a rite of passage. They are known as the wounded healer archetype because they literally have to be almost at a near death state or severely ill in order to undergo this rite of passage. And when they're in this when they are in this state of almost death, they go into the spiritual world, they learn the techniques and knowledge they need to know to heal themselves first and foremost. Should they recover and come back into the present world and have come back healing themselves and healed overall, they have passed that rite of passage and become a shaman in their own respect. So there are a few different ways that a shaman will work their craft or what I would like to call how their healing process works. The first initial thing that they may do is go into a trance-like state and work with what we like to call or what they like to call the darkness. They're working in this darkness to help the individual in their healing process. Now, they might work with benevolent and malevolent spirits, spirits, as I mentioned earlier, but I actually listened to a shaman discuss how nothing is particularly malevolent. And a lot of the reasons why people cannot do the shaman craft is because dealing with these extremely dark entities can be extremely um, jarring and of course fearful and a shaman will work with this darkness and they firmly believe that malevolent spirits aren't really malevolent they're just extremely low vibrational energies that ultimately need to be pulled forward Re unattached, detached from the individual or cleansed and healed entirely because everything is made up of energy and a malevolent spirit is just extremely negative energy. And so working in this darkness, they help the individual come back to life fully healed and cleansed. A third thing that they do is they might help the passage and transition of an individual who has passed away and they need assistance in moving that individual on to make sure they go where they need to go upon their death. And the last thing that a shaman may particularly do is they might be a mediator within their tribe. They might help animal souls transition on depending on the tribe that they're part of. And they can sometimes be perceived as religious leaders in their own respect, depending on the tribe. So that wraps up my All About Witches series. Thank you all so much for joining me and learning and growing with me. If you're interested in any further videos I'm going to be releasing in the future, I'm going to start releasing more different types of videos now that this series is done, as well as my spiritual vlogs that I began a little while back. Feel free to click the subscribe button and hit that notification bell and the like button as well. And as a reminder, I did set up a donation link. It's in the description box below for those of you who wish to donate any little amount matters as it helps me continue making these videos i send you all love and light have a happy halloween a safe halloween as well because we are in the middle of a pandemic and i will talk to you all soon bye